sifting up three and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and just a pinch of salt, because today we're going to make something called pizzelle, and you've all had them, I know it. So now we have our, our flour. We've got to get butter going, and you want to use softened butter. And I have 12 tablespoons of butter in a bowl, unsalted butter. So if you can't find unsalted butter, then you want to use no salt in the recipe. And now we want to add one and a half cups of sugar. And we want to mix that in. And then you want to have ready five large eggs. So after you get this mixed up, start adding the eggs one at a time. Here are my eggs. So there is the extract. And now we simply add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and mix this up. Now this is a dough that is a lot easier to work with if it's chilled. So I like to make this early in the day and I put it in the refrigerator and I chill it for a couple hours. So once it's all mixed up, you want to cover that with some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator. This is a Pitzel iron right here, you see? And you can buy these in bake stores, cookware stores, and they have a metal plate. Sometimes they have a Teflon coated plate. And this is what we're going to put the dough on. And you need to preheat the form well in advance so that the cookie does not stick. So here is my dough. There. And the only other thing we need with that is something that you probably know from childhood. Or maybe if you're a kid, you're watching and you know what this is as, as is. This is something called nonpareils. See that? Those little colored candies. We used to call them hundreds and thousands. You can just make regular pizzelle in your pizzelle iron. But this is kind of a nifty idea. I take two spoons, teaspoons, and I get a wad of the dough. Then I put it right into the sprinkles. This is a good idea. This gives you kind of a stained glass effect on this cookie. Then I sit the cookie right in the center of the form. And mine makes two, but some will make four, and they'll make them smaller size. So I put two right in the center, just like that. And it's okay if you get nonpareils in your dough, because you're going to be doing these right along, making up the whole pile like this. Then I close the form. You can lock it. And there's a little light on the top that tells you when the form is hot enough. And then you have to count, you know, uno, due, tre, cuatro, cinque, sei, and so on and so forth. And you'll have to make a couple, two or three, before you get it right. So I would say if you get up to 50 seconds or so, it's going to be just the right color. So now we can check this. And what I do is I have a fork or a butter knife handy. And when I think it's ready, and you can tell by smell too, I lift this up and I see that they're just the nicest color, to golden brown that I want. And then you can either have them flat like that or you can take a cannoli form and just wrap them right around just like that. You see, so you make a very interesting pizzelle that you can then fill. This is an old form that my Nona Saporito used. And just take some dough, sit it right in the center of the form, just like that, and then close this. And this went over a gas flame, so you had to do these one at a time. So now while that's cooking, let me come back over here and see how we're doing. Isn't this nice? This is just so much fun. You can also do this in a cup. You can get two little custard cups ready and push the form in by putting one little custard cup on top and making a little shape. And that's got to sit until we can take that off. It's got to cool down a bit. And here's another little gadget you can use, a little cone form that you can take and just roll the pit cell around just like that, you see? So there are several neat ways you can do this. So back to this one on the flame, once you cook it on one side, then you have to turn it over and cook it on the other side. And again, this you have little 
less control with because there, of course, you've got controlled heat. Here, you've got to do this over a gas flame. And well, there's the first one. And when you make these, you have to do several to cure the form. And then, again, just like I did with the other one, you have to lift it gently off the form. And this takes a little bit of patience. And make sure you're not doing this anywhere near the heat. So this is the first one on here. Normally, I take the first one and I throw it away. And this one is going to have to be thrown away because it's broken, number one. So you throw it away to season the pan, dig off the rest of that, and start over. You want to make sure that you take all of the excess dough out from under the form. And then what you have to do is take a little bit of butter and put it on the form again to make sure the next time this is going to come out. So she says. So there it goes. And now I'll put one more on there, and we'll give it our best shot. After these cool, you can just pull the form out, and you have made yourself some very interesting looking cookies. That's a better one yet. So you have to make a couple of them before they're absolutely perfect. And then, again, use a fork to lift them up. And I don't know whether you can see the design there, but you see the man and the woman toasting each other. And if you go over the edge of the form, you can just pick off that excess to make it even. No one's ever going to know. And then you allow these to cool.